Hello and welcome to this edition of the Feral Felt Show. Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, today's show is all about peer pressure, and my guest today is Myra. Dante. Hi. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and Miranda. Um, and we wanted to have them on the show because these are all young people that may experience or have gone through some of the things that we're going to talk about today as it relates to peer pressure. Uh, Dante and I have been in communication for quite a while, actually. Uh, via Facebook, we've kept in touch and we talked about doing the show and so forth. So I'm like, you know what, that's a great idea. We need to do that and address some issues that are going on, with our especially with our African-American uh, youth. Dante, peer pressure is something that uh, you're familiar with. Yes. Yes. Okay, and tell me um, some of your experiences as it relates to peer pressure. Well, I, I think that, you know, everyone deals with peer pressure. And so, uh, for me, it's a different dynamic because something that may be uh, pressure, that, that may pressure someone else may not pressure me, right. if that makes sense. Right. And so, um, you know, I just graduated from college uh, three months ago, and so... All right. I think, I think that's certainly a round of, of applause. That's awesome, man. Uh, and so, you know, in a college environment, 18 to 22 year olds, uh, there's a lot of privilege that's going on. You know, you party every night. I mean, this is just the reality of it. You got to, okay. you got to stay focused. And you know, of course, you got friends who tell you, "Hey, come on, let's go party." And I'm like, "No, I got to write papers." Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and, I mean, and, and, and you know, and we say that, but that is a real reality for me. I mean, literally multiple times, so you have to be able to say no to that. So yeah. So tell me, how do you actually stay focused when you're asked these questions, or you feel the peer pressure like that? How do you actually stay focused and on course with what your main goal is? Uh, I think, uh, for me, I write, I write down my goals, and okay. so I think that's kind of the, the first thing that you have to, you have to know what your goals are. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when you know what your goals are, then, then I know because I'm trying to graduate from school, right. that, I'm, that anything that doesn't align with that goal, <laughs> I'm not going to do. And so, okay. uh, yeah, so I think just staying focused right now your goals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know what, that, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And I think one of the things that's important, a lot of times we miss this, is that we need to write down our goals so that we can have them in front of us. You know, like the, like the word says, you know, write the vision, make it plain. Uh, I think that's very important, and a lot of times we don't take the time mm -hmm. to write those goals down. Right. Um, but I think it can help, definitely help us to become successful. I want to ask you, Myra, have you actually experienced any peer pressure yourself? I have. Um, one, my first year in college, um, it was my first time away, of course, um, to freely get the chance to drink alcohol without <laughs> sneaking, sneaking around to do it. Um, a lot was provided to us, and um, you don't know the rules. You don't know how it's going to affect you because it's your first time doing it. And uh, my first actual time, I was not in control of my body, and it scared me. Um, I do now, I mean, you don't know your limits, and you don't know what's, uh, what's to come of it when you drink. You see other people doing it, you don't know. I mean, you see how they're um, taking effect to it, but when it actually happens to you, it's a completely different experience. But it did scare me. And you know, that's, I'm, I'm glad you said it did scare you because a lot of times we have to be scared right. <laughs> in order to straighten up or we have to have a bad experience in order to straighten up and get back on course. Right. You know, so it's good that you actually had that experience because you probably saved yourself a lot of heartache down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, now and I want to ask you also, what type of advice would you give to another young lady who's uh, just coming into college? Um, like you guys said, write down your goals. Know what you're there for, what you're focused on. Um, first off, alcohol doesn't have to be on your goal sheet. You don't have to do it. Um, it's not something that you have to do. Uh, you can totally skip that that altogether and just focus on what you came there to do. And that's important, yeah. Absolutely. I, I want to, uh, Miranda, now, for you guys, you guys may not know, but these two young ladies actually are sisters, uh, Myra and Miranda, uh, and they're both here. You know, I'm sure that family also influences your behavior once you're away uh, and on your own as well. Yes. Uh, Miranda, I want to ask you, how has your family influenced you when you were away? Well, um, it's four of us. It's two boys and two girls. I'm okay. the youngest girl. And if I've, if I've seen my older brother doing something, I'll say, okay, I understand how that works. I'll see her doing something, I understand how that works. So when I'm on my own, I say, okay, I don't want to do that, so I don't do that. <laughs> if I say, he handled that well, so I'll handle it the same way or try to find my own way. So family is a big part. It's good to have siblings that 
can show you or talk to you so you can be able to know when you get in a situation. So it yeah. does help. That's very important, you know, and and that goes back to family, uh, like like you were saying. And Dante, I know how I know how you were raised already, uh, because uh, Dante's mom and I have been friends like for nine hundred years. Uh, it seems like, <laughs> and she actually happened to be sitting in the audience today. And I've known Dante since Dante. Oh God, Dante, how long has it been, man? I'm, I'm twenty-two. Since. It's been like a long time. Yeah, like a long time. Uh, and I've actually watched him grow into an amazing young man. Uh, I remember uh, when he was in the studio and we took his uh, senior pictures, and now we fast forward four, what, four and a half years later? Four, four years. And now he's completed college, uh, and that in itself, uh, again, uh, yeah. for real. Yeah. 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 Um, so, Dante, I wanted to ask you, what are some of your future goals? Huh. Uh, long term or short term? <laughs> well, give me a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, well, let's do long term. Uh, long term, I uh, want to be a, a successful entrepreneur. Uh, I uh, used to put a, a monetary value on that, but I don't anymore because uh, success isn't necessarily making a million dollars. You can be successful and make $100,000. Uh, it depends on what's going on. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a, that's a very, uh, one of my, my long-term goals. So, mm -hmm. uh, short-term, uh, I do a lot of reading. Okay, uh, okay. I've read nine books this year already outside, wow. outside of school. Wow. That's wow. Outside of school, and so uh, I, I read at least a book a month, uh, at least. And so last month I read three. This month I'm really focusing um, on a book um, by Stephen Covey, author of that um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Okay, okay. Uh, but I, I'm reading a book called First Things First, which is uh, one of his habits in his book, and it's directly dealing with priorities and setting mm. goals and writing down goals, and so. I, you know, I just came off, I'm, I just read this morning about setting goals and stuff. Really? So that's one of my short-term goals is to make sure that I keep my mind sharp and do a lot of reading. Yeah, and that, I think that's really awesome because we have to constantly feed ourselves mm -hmm. uh, these positive things so that we can continue along the path uh, that we've set for ourselves. Now, I know you also, in, in school, you actually formed a, a, a group, right? That was uh, for something particularly, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> Uh, 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 it wasn't a group. It was, we we uh, uh, for a couple of weeks we uh, did uh, organize a demonstration. Me and one of my friends, Dan Felton, uh, we organized a demonstration um, in regards to racial equity on our campus, um, mm -hmm. and it was in response to David Gardner, the Michael Brown shooting, uh, and the many other shootings that has happened in our country over the last year, uh, and so. Yeah, we organized a demonstration and, and had a, and had a, a conversation. Me and him facilitated this conversation about okay. race, uh, and yeah, just doing some leadership things, trying to get, get people more aware and and have a conversation about it. Yeah. Okay, I think that's awesome, man. That is awesome. And and speaking of that, I want us to talk a little bit more about the different things that have taken place against the African American youth in today's society. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we come back. You guys stick around. We'll be back in just a moment. When we left off, we were talking about uh, the racial injustices that are taking place against our African American youth uh, by police, actually. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced being stopped by an officer uh, <laughs> or anything like that since all of this stuff has taken place, but when we see the different things that are happening in our society as it relates to African American youth, how do you feel when you're being pulled over by a police officer? First, um, you need to make sure that your attitude inward <coughs> is together because you don't want to give off any type of negative vibes because you don't know what's coming towards you or who you're going to be dealing with because all cops are different and um, definitely african-american males um, know that the things that are going on and how it's going on you need to know uh, what you need to do and how you need to speak and the rules and how you need to follow them as far as what comes first, what comes second, and just comply with whatever they're asking for and do whatever you need to do to get out of the situation. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's a very good answer. Very good answer. Yes. Uh, Dante, yourself. Yeah, I think that, uh, uh, going along with Myra's point, that the system is designed, it's set up against us already as, as African Americans. Uh, males and females, you know, I mean, at first, you know, it, it was heavily males, but now you got females, you know, are being mauled down and killed and shot and whatever else is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first thing you need to know is that uh, the system, the laws are set up and they are against African Americans. They are against uh, minority groups in our country in general. In general. Uh, you don't need to feed into that. <laughs> right, you, exactly. You, don't, yeah. you can't right. be talking crazy to these police officers. You can't be... Uh, you know, being loud and reckless, you cannot feed into those stereotypes because trust me, they have the stereotypes already that black people are animalistic, that they're mad, that they're violent. Yes, you you can't feed into that. Yeah. You, you you have to keep your calm. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, that's not necessarily saying that bad things won't still happen. Okay? I mean, you know, I, 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 I mean, I, I mean, you know, you know, sometimes people get to have this. We have this 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 uh, perception that just because we are doing everything right, that bad things still can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's absolutely. Not, and that's not necessarily true either. I mean, you can be doing everything right and still get shot absolutely. and still be killed. And yeah. so, uh, my my advice would be just don't feed into it. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I think Dante made a very very good good point. Don't feed into it uh, because oftentimes we are uh, certainly stereotyped and certainly racially profiled. Uh, oftentimes, too, as African American people, and I'm seeing it happen so much with our youth that it really concerns me. How do you feel about that, Miranda? For me, it's like I'll take you can take this, fake it till you make it. Even though okay, you can say <laughs> get the police, all that kind of stuff, but just do what they're asking you to do. Get to a position where okay, you get out of that situation, you keep doing what you need to do, you get in a position where you can actually make a change, and then that's where it's going to come into play, where things are going to start changing because they do need to change. But you're being a small man in the car, the victim of it, you killed. How's that help? That doesn't help. You have right. to do what you need to do to get where you need to be, so you can be able to actually make a difference. So that's. Very important. Very important. And you know, it's almost like playing a psychology game. You right. know, you yeah. just yeah, it's almost like playing a psychology game when you're when you're accosted or when you're stopped by these police officers. Play into it. Be extra nice. Extra. Be extra kind. Those are the things that you might have to do in order to save your life. Right. You know. Now, if you have a complaint, what I've learned in talking to different police officers, uh, and captains and chiefs and uh, police, this, that, and the other, is that be compliant. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you're not gonna win uh, yeah. when you're dealing with the law. But if you have a complaint, and when you have a complaint, take it to the headquarters. Right. There's proper protocol for everything. So yes. you need to think about, okay, just everything is <clears throat> things are on camera. So make sure when we're when is we're sitting in the room and they're trying to figure out who's gonna win out of what, make sure you're looking good on camera. That's all that matters. And if you're looking <laughs> good on camera, everybody's gonna be like, Okay, well, let's take that side versus in the police. He's doing the wrong thing, they're gonna get on him, make sure you're doing the right thing. That's all that. That's what I've been seeing on the news mm -hmm. is that okay, you look bad. And yeah. so I can't you help you. Yeah, I can't and definitely have you. your information together when yes. you get there. Everything that you need legally. Know your rights. And, yeah, know your rights and yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's so important to know your rights. You, you know? have to be educated. You, gotta read. you have to be Stay educated. Stay in school so you can know some stuff. You think that's pointless. Physics is pointless. But it's going to come up some way. Some way, somehow you're going to well, try to learn something every day because you're going to, you're going to, step yourself into a, a position or an ex you're going to have an experience where you're going to need to pull that knowledge out and say, okay, I'm glad I know that because now I can do this and Absolutely. now I'm going to mm -hmm. so it's good. Right. Right. Nothing's wasted. Mm -hmm. You know, like the old adage, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is certainly power, power, you know. And you know, one of the things I wanted to say that I think is really great what you did when you formed the group uh, is that we have to know that we have a voice. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't operate using our voice, but when you did that, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Because you know what to do to be heard, and you were heard the right way mm -hmm. by forming a coalition or forming right. a group. Uh, so I think that's awesome, Dante. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that's awesome. You know, as we're talking about police brutality and the things that we've seen, we're seeing happening to African American youth, I know you guys have all seen the latest story in the news with Sandra Bland. Yes. I want to ask your opinion, Myra, of that case. Oh. Um. Well, with the things that were coming on the news, there were uh, things that were coming into play with people who played an action inside of the police um, department and how her 
what was portrayed, I mean, portrayed of her being her, um, what is it that you take? The picture that you take? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mug shot. The mug shot was not um, her actual mug shot. The things that she was doing inside the jail wasn't actually her. And the things that they put together uh, within the, um, the system, the system mm -hmm. was... Contrived, you think? Right. Mm -hmm. um, some type of... Um, what is it? But they manipulated things, obviously, huh? Yeah. Yes, in a way, because they say that she was actually laying down and she was unconscious when they took the mugshot, and or she officially didn't take an actual mugshot. So some things were uh, manipulated within the system. Mm -hmm. And certainly left to question. Uh, yeah, certainly left to question. And uh, Miranda, yourself? Well, what I saw was when you when you going to. I've never done the whole jail system thing, but when you go in there, they, they ask her, they ask you to write down um, your state of mind, like if she was, um, if she was on, if she, if she was feeling depressed, right? Mm -hmm. If she was feeling depressed, if she was taking any pills, she wrote on there that she has thought about committing suicide recently. Mm -hmm. So having that, whoever admitted her, they should have had her on watch. None of that would have never happened right. if they would have done what they needed to do as far as having her on watch. I don't know exactly if she killed herself yeah. or not. You really don't know, but you would at least have a watch if you would have saw the paperwork. You take that paperwork. Don't just make it just just fill this out. Okay, let me put it inside a little drawer. Right. Look at it and see she's having an issue. So keep an eye on her. That way she won't be killed and when it's time for her trial, she'll actually be there. Right. You know? yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think one of the things that may have taken place during that time was because of her, her, her behavior with the officers, mm -hmm. they treated her a particular way once she got into the system. Right. I don't think they necessarily cared for her the way that right. they should have exactly. cared for because a young woman yeah. who has given you this information mm -hmm. uh, that was supposed to help her life to be continued right. and, not, and not so much ended. Uh, I think it's very tragic. I think it's very unfortunate. And I think that there are certainly things that we can all learn from that mm -hmm. uh, to help us when we're caught up in that particular type of situation. Right. And we'll talk about it a little further. We're going to be back in just a moment. You guys stick around. First thing is, is that uh, it's important to continue this trial to get educated. Uh, you know, from the onset of chattel slavery in the United States, they took education away from us. Uh, you couldn't read the Bible, you couldn't read, and so uh, the first thing is to get educated. That's just not necessarily college. Uh, you can read books, you can read articles, you can read uh, all kind of stuff. Educate yourself, uh, and I think that's the first thing. Is that you know it's kind of hard to uh, to be in a bad situation when you got education on your side. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the first thing. Is that you, need to, uh, you need to make sure that you're educated. And I think that, you know, hey, the, the system is set up against us. We know that. History tells us that. Uh, don't play into it. I mean, j just don't play into it. You, you know that when the, when the police stop you, that uh, they have a perception that you're animalistic. They have a perception that you're violent. Uh, you know, going back to the Michael Brown case where, that, where, the, uh, where the officer said, hey, he looked like he was could, could kill me uh, with his bare hands. Like what? Like is he a, is he a super saiyan? I mean, who is this guy? <laughs> I, I mean, but they have that they have that perception of us, and so knowing all that, um, it's important not to play into it, and, and you know, and, and make sure that you know what you gotta do. Yeah. So, like you said, education is certainly important. Um, Ma uh, Myra, I want to ask you, how do you feel about that? And you know what? I want to ask you from the perspective of a young lady, uh, based on what we've seen with the Sandra Bland case. How do you feel as an African American woman? that might be stopped for these officers. Definitely that what we're saying is um, it's not just happening to African American males, it's not just happening to guy men, it's happening to ladies as well. Um, and on that fact, being a lady, 
growing up, you know, say, saying to yourself how ladies are supposed to be treated, you definitely want to um, be educated and as a woman and be strong and know your rights so that you can fight back in the right way that you need to fight back and know what you need to do, especially being a, a woman yeah, in absolutely. America. I totally agree. And uh, Miranda, I want to ask you the same question. About the Sandra Bland. About the Sandra Bland case, yes. Okay. And how you feel being an African-American woman? Well, that? It, I don't think it's much of a difference. I'm not like, I'm not like pro-woman or pro-man or anything like that. It's just like, it's about doing the right, do, doing what, as far as young people, okay, let's go to young people. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you're young, you're ready to, you have so much to give. Your heart is, is is passionate about a certain subject, like you did this to my people and all that kind of stuff. But what you got to do is you have to listen to the older people that are telling you, I've been through this, don't take it that way. I know Sandra Bland, she's been in this whole, the black people are this, this. But I hate to go to that because I really want us all to be, because I've seen it happen to Caucasian people. And, even, and I do understand the reality of us being black. But that's just because what we give off as a presence. We, we give off this strong presence where we don't want to back down. And a lot of times the police officers really feel threatened, but that's just our spirit. But we have to bring it down a little bit and do what they're asking us to do so we can get out of the situation. So I just wish that she would have. And I don't know the full story about it. I don't know exactly. I don't think we're ever going to know the story because a lot of it is the vaccines and they don't want. It's just a lot going on. So what you can do is you can kind of take a piece out of it and say, okay, I'm going to learn from that. That's pretty much all I can say about it. Yeah. And that, that certainly makes a, a lot of sense. And also one of the things that was mentioned earlier, when we're faced with that type of situation, make sure that we stay in that area of the dash cam so right. that everything that takes place can it takes place can actually be seen in that dash cam. Mm -hmm. And uh, a point that one of our audience members made was that stay alive. Mm -hmm. Stay alive. Yeah. So that if there is a story to tell, you'll be able to tell that story. And uh, if we, things get out of control, you may not be able to tell that story. Mm -hmm. But stay alive long enough, and you stay alive just by cooperating. Mm -hmm. Even if it doesn't sound right or feel right, cooperate as best you can. Mm -hmm. So that you can save yourself. You can later go to the police department and file a formal complaint uh, so that something can actually be done uh, to that officer, or that officer can perhaps be reprimanded or something like that. Uh, and so I think it's important that we have that type of knowledge and also knowing our rights. Like you mentioned earlier, education is certainly the key. We need to know our rights as citizens so that when we're faced with these particular situations, we're able to handle them and deal with them in the most effective way to keep us alive, mm -hmm. to tell our story. Because if we're not, the story that will be told will probably not be an accurate story mm -hmm. uh, that will benefit us uh, the most, you know, if that makes any sense at all. Mm -hmm. um, Dante, I know you started a, a group at your school, man. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, uh, me and Daniel Felton, we, uh, we uh, after uh, shooting Michael Brown in Ferguson, after um, the Eric Gardner situation uh, in November of last year, uh, me and uh, my, 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 my bro, that's what he is, he's my bro, <laughs> uh, we, uh, uh, we decided that we needed to have a, a conversation. There was, some, there was actually some things happening on our campus as well, uh, not police brutality, but uh, we, we had some things happening on our campus related to uh, race and so uh, we said hey we need the first thing we need to do we need to have a conversation uh, with with people uh, my campus is 13 percent minority and only three percent black uh, and the other 85 is are from Car are, um, Caucasians um, and so the first thing we had to do we had to have a conversation uh, because nothing happens with, without a conversation right uh, you have to that's that's where just where you start uh, a week later uh, we said, hey, we need to do a demonstration. Uh, and so we, uh, in three days, we organized a demonstration uh, and we demonstrated. Uh, and it was, again, majority of the other people who were there were white people, um, allies with us saying, hey, we, we hear you uh, and we're, we're here to fight for you. And allies are important, so that's what we did. Uh, we won three awards for it uh, at the oh, end of the wow. year. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty awesome, man. And I think what what is also important is that we need to know that we have a voice, mm -hmm. and our voice can be heard the correct way. And when you can form a coalition like what you did at the school, that's the voice being heard the right way. Uh, there is such a, a thing as a peaceful demonstration, 
and certainly that's what took place at your school. We do have a voice, and it's important that we know that we have a voice and utilize our voice to best benefit us, which is obviously what you did. I, I commend you, man. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is awesome. I think that is awesome. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think we need a whole lot of more young men Definitely. like Dante who will actually uh, take the role of leadership uh, to make things take place and happen in our society. So uh, keep up the good work. Certainly keep up the good work. And we hope that in everybody hearing this and talking about it, like you mentioned a moment ago, talking about it is what, is what breeds change. Mm -hmm. You know, and bringing about an opportunity for voices to be heard. You know, we all have a voice. And another thing, we have to be careful of how we carry ourselves um, so that we don't draw negative attention to ourselves. You know, if you see a young man with a big stereotype, like you said about earlier in the show, when you see a young man with his, with his pants hanging down underneath his buttocks and his underwear showing, you automatically have a picture in your mind as to what type of kid this might possibly be. We have to be careful of how we represent who we are. Because misconceptions can always take place based on appearance, which is called prejudice. We're going to continue to talk about it. We're going to be back in just a moment. You guys stick around. in a lot of ways uh, when we think about brutality that uh, we're seeing against the, our African-American youth uh, in today's society. Now, we hear the phrase, Black Lives Matter, a lot, you know, and I, I've heard from Dante as it relates to leadership. From you young ladies, I'm going to start with you, Miranda. How do you see yourself fitting into the, the, the sphere of Black Lives Matter in a leadership role to make a difference? Okay, well, black lives do matter because I've been seeing a lot of, a lot of different segments going on with Hispanic world, they're doing their thing, you know, they're stepping on the map, but we have to step on the map. I'm going to school for teaching. I want to teach. That's how I feel like Black Lives Matter. It starts, and I want to teach early childhood, so it's like the young youth, if it's, a lot of it is the parents, but I, I'm going to do my part. When they come here and they have a certain attitude that I feel like I'm not going to get them anywhere, I'm going to try to change it as much as I can, and I'm going to talk to the parent, I'm going to say, can you do this, try this do this because if we lose them at this precious stage I think that's it you yeah. know so I really want to make sure that I'm putting into them what my mom put into me and if I see if I've been hearing that I've been I've been getting some good views on me and how I am so I like to share that with them if it's a young uh, young lady and you know she doesn't feel beautiful I'm 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 having a girl day at my house hopefully it's big <laughs> enough but every, every little thing matters and a lot of it what I've been seeing is like people think people, teenagers, suicidal, a lot of that is emotion. And mm -hmm. if we can't feed into a girl's or a guy's emotion of dad not being there, mom needs to step up and try to do the best they can by taking them to the church, getting a man into their lives. They need that. They have to have that. And I want to, as a teacher, as an educator, I want to make sure that I'm doing my part for the black lives and all lives so they can grow up to be great men and women. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to pose the same question to yourself as well. A lot of what she said with starting young, um, girls as they're growing up, a lot of things are told to them, whether it be outside of the home, in school, their confidence is broken. And a lot of that can play a part in your life. And as black lives do matter, me being um, a young adult, I can give that off to younger kids, younger women, um, not only to have a man to come in to tell you who you are or how you have to be, but to be strong and relay that because there is a lot of um, young single black mothers um, in the community and they're strong and they're doing what they have to do to take care of their kids and play that role that the man decided he didn't want to play. So I do think that that does play a role in uh, the kids growing up, women growing up, being strong and um, letting that legacy of blackness 
African American, just it's just a good word, and to just let that legacy continue. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I say it all the time, each one reach one, mm -hmm. you know. If each one of us can try to reach somebody uh, to help them along the journey, and then if that person reaches down to help somebody else, you know, we can make this world a better place mm -hmm. in, in, in which we live. Um, I think that uh, as far as we're talking about African-American women, African-American women are such strong women. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, a lot of African-American women single-handedly raise their entire family mm -hmm. uh, when, the, when the male is not present. Uh, taking care of A, B, C, and D, and mm -hmm. F, and G. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I think that uh, by us having those types of values and witnessing that, it helps us to be stronger. It's important that we know the shoulders on which we stand. And when we can look at the people that have come before us and see them as an example, it certainly makes a difference. And I certainly believe that each one of you will be shoulders on which somebody else will stand someday based on what you've said on the show today. Uh, and, and I think that is very, very, very important. You know, I always like to ask people this question. I'm going to start with you, Dante. Where do you see yourself five years from now? <laughs> uh, five years from now, uh, I say I'm 22, so I'll be 27. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing the math. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be 27. Uh, married, hopefully. Uh, let's start what? there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's fine, but that's the first thing you're going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's, 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 that's a good man. Uh, uh, married, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, just be, just, you know, mentoring people, mm -hmm. uh, starting to, to really, really uh, get some stability in my life uh, out of my mama's house. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I see that. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, just growing and, and, and really uh, putting myself out there. I and certainly uh, making a difference in the world. Oh, for sure. For, for mm -hmm. sure, always. Yeah. That's, that's like understood. You know, right. like you always gotta, you know, you gotta always give it, always give it. And, and a lot of times, um, even just black people, because we are all African American and we are talking about those subjects, when you figure out a way out, or a different avenue or something new. Come back, share it so that other people can get a chance. Don't hold it to yourself when you find out something new. Mm -hmm. Share it with people so they can get their chance. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Miranda. Oh, well, what was the question? <laughs> oh, why do you see yourself five years from now? Oh, um, yeah, I'm married too and having kids and stuff like that. I'll be 25. I guess that's a bit. <laughs> um, definitely a teacher. I want to be teacher of the month, teacher of the year, all that, that good stuff. Um, being heavily in the community as much as I can. I see my mom doing that a lot, like way more than re really, sh I don't know what to say she should, but I want to make sure that my, my end is handled and whatever else I have of myself to give, I want to make sure that I give it. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what, and that is so important, giving. You know, giving is so important. And a lot of times when you give, it's not necessarily for something that you get, you'll gain monetarily. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we have to pay things forward, right. as they say. You know, and if you can be an example to our African American youth, then why not? Mm -hmm. You know, and each one of you guys are excellent examples. You know, and I feel blessed and honored that each one of you are here today to be on the show. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. you know, one of the things that I, that I certainly wanted to say, and I said it to Miranda and Myra earlier, a lot of times, when we set the panel for today, we had a couple other guests that were supposed to come. But I always say this, whoever is supposed to be there will be there. Mm -hmm. The ones that are supposed to speak, they will speak. And things were changed today. Mm -hmm. And because they were changed, we were blessed by the change. Right. And it's so good when we're able to adapt to things that happen sporadically in our lives mm -hmm. that we don't expect. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we get that message. You know, and in what happened today, I hope that each one of you guys got the message that just because something is altered does not mean that it stops. Right. But we find another way to make it happen, and that's exactly what we did today. Myra, I'm so glad that you stepped in and Thank showed you. up on today's segment. You did an awesome job. Dante, needless to say, you've made it all very clear. <laughs> and Miranda, the same thing to you. And I may have said it a, a, a moment ago that Myra and Miranda are actually siblings. Yes. Yeah, yeah.
You guys did a wonderful job. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank now, for more information on this show, you can certainly reach me at Let's Talk About It 12 TV at gmail.com. That's Let's Talk About It 12 TV at gmail.com. You can also find our shows on YouTube. You simply go to YouTube, type in the name Farrell Phelps, and a list of our shows are right there for your viewing pleasure. All right, folks, until next time, we'll see you then. <laughs>